Good morning. Welcome to Expert Insights. I am your host, Raju Mandhia. And here at Expert Insights, we take external views of internal successes by people from the creative field, people from the field of education. And we take, take our views very objectively of successes that may be such subjective. So this morning, we have some wonderful guests, very young, very good looking too at the same time. One of them is a professor of UP, Professor Juno Parungao. And she teaches education and psychology, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have engineer, make sure of that word, engineer uh, Claude Santa Clara, who is a consultant to a company called Mindpool Incorporated. And they are both professionals and specialists and subject matter experts of a subject called NLP. And that, they say, it means Neuro Linguistic Programming. I have no idea what that means, so let's hear it from them. Welcome to Expert Insights. Welcome to Expand Insights. Thank you. We're happy to be here. <laughs> Goody. Yeah, I'm also happy to be here. Goody, goody. So before we dive into the subject matter of this crazy word that you put up here, <laughs> uh, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, ladies first or people on the inside first? People first. on the inside first. People on the inside first. Okay. Well, I'm Claude Santa Clara. I'm a licensed metallurgical engineer by profession. And I I have a master's also in metallurgical engineering from UP. However, I'm not practicing that anymore. All right, so sorry for the metals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so sorry. sorry for the metals, yeah. <laughs> and Professor Juno. I'm Juno Parungao, and uh, I've been teaching for 15 years. Oh in my college. gosh. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> and I'm currently taking my PhD in educational psychology in UP. I'm, uh, I work with Claude in Mindful Inc. And I also am an artist. Wow, we so many things happening at the so same many time, no? Happen, so yeah. metal, metallurgy and Art. education at the same yeah. time. Great. Uh, and what keeps you busy besides teaching at? Uh, what, what is the work that you do which excites you and uh, is, is at the forefront of what you do? The big thing. Well, in Mindful Inc., we develop programs that are NLP based and neurosemantics based. We also give uh, certificate courses. Um, uh, Claude here is the coach. And then uh, he also does self actualization programs. And I actually work under him in that arena. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So we need to understand in that case what is NLP and what is neurosemantics. Did you mention that, right? You yes. dropped that word, no? So if you drop a big word, I'm going to catch it. Doesn't mean that I'll know what it is. No? So NLP and neurosemantics. Go, engineer. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me attempt All right. to okay, do this me, sim the simplest way I can. Yes, sir. So NLP. So NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Yes, sir. So let's cut it into three words. Neuro means neurology or, okay. or behavior. All right. They are actions. Okay. 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 Linguistic means language, mm -hmm. spoken or not spoken. Okay. Programming means habit. And so neurolinguistic programming is just how language, spoken, not spoken, symbolic or not, okay, um, influences our neurology or our behavior. Okay. And when that happens, it becomes patterns of habits, patterns mm. of speaking, thinking, feeling. Mm. So that's NLP. Mm. In a nutshell. Uh, Do you want big. the academic... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll take the academic uh, explanation too. Well, the academic explanation is NLP tried to bridge the, the neurobiological basis of psychology, the behaviorist, the cognitive, and uh, psychoanalytical. Four areas, okay. Four areas. Yeah. Because uh, it believes that Everything is, in, is needed in order to have change in behaviors, both internal and external. The, the problem with the four approaches in psychology uh, that we teach in school is they have a clear demarcation. We cannot, they cannot overlap. They are very strict with their disciplines. But with NLP, they try to uh, erase those walls, barriers. those barriers, and they came up with a model that, uh, may I say, dumbfounded the uh, old school psychologists. That's why a lot of them are skeptics when it comes to neurolinguistic programming and neurosemantics. Uh, the four, uh, the four uh, disciplines were, again, one more time, was uh, biology, psychology, mm -hmm. 
neurobiological, yeah, cognitive, behaviorist. Cognitive and behavior. So these are, so they were all blended together and a new model was put together, which yes. is what you talk about or which is what you put forward. Yes. Right, and uh, you said it was dumb, they were dumbfounded. Who are they? Because it made uh, everything simple. No, but when you say they were dumbfounded. Psychologists, dumb perhaps even uh, those in the social sciences. When, when, I w when I wrote the article on NLP, it was very hard to put it out in the academe because there, they say there are more questions than uh, answered uh, things that I put out there. But to me, it's very simple. <laughs> they don't want to accept it probably because it made things more simple and you know how long it is for you to to finish PhD and there here comes a, a model that makes everything simple I should know because I, I think I'm in my fourth or fifth year in this, uh, in this field yeah 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 well uh, when he, uh, wait I, I you said they they is just the professors and the founders the of the old disciplines yes I don't uh, want to name names. <laughs> yeah, no, what I meant is days is a big number, not day, right? Day. A lot uh, of people in the academy. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so that was the academic explanation and that was the workman, the layman's <laughs> explanation. Yeah, layman's no? explanation. Now, now, what happens with this discipline? I mean, what can an uh, individual do with it? What's the relevance of it? Well, in a nutshell, it will empower individuals. And, uh, and how that is done, the process would include so, so the the lay, from a layman's point of view, knowing NLP, now you can connect to people because now you'll understand what they're saying, mm -hmm. you'll understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what they're saying and what you're doing, now you can ask specific questions so that you can understand. Okay? And so that's the linguistic part of, of it. If I just listen to your language, I would understand and when I say language it's body language the way you move and yeah, the way you say words the, and so the just the, 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 the non -word. so uh, does that mean that we up to now up until NLP was put on the forefront people did not understand each other or they did not understand is that is that what the assumption is when you say now you will understand may I say something about yes, that first uh, before NLP was put up it was uh, being uh, there's this uh, feeling that I know what's good for you kind of therapy that's why I'm imposing ah, my values okay, on you. Okay, okay, so there was a slight assumption on what is right. Mm -mm. Okay, it's not a slight, maybe a bit more might. Yeah. Not really a slight, a mighty <coughs> assumption, yeah? Mm. And that's where the problem uh, gets in because oh. uh, like Claude will explain later, my map is different uh, from your map. So what I is a map? I mean, as in like how I understand things, my okay. we call it the mental representation of reality is different from in layman's term we all have uh, different experiences and, I, and that's why everybody is unique I cannot impose my understanding of things on you and that is how NLP and neurosemantics comes in okay so uh, map meaning how I understand stuff Mm -hmm. No, so uh, if if uh, uh, me and the cameraman don't understand the si uh, stuff similarly, is that the assumption? We both uh, look at things differently or understand things differently. That's the map. That's exactly. The map. Okay, so so <laughs> if there's five of us here right now, there's really five aliens inside yeah. the room, and and five aliens, okay. yeah, aliens, and you have your own map of your world. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wait, okay, wow. and so okay. that's how you navigate your thoughts, your feelings, any trigger outside, anything that a person will say to you, you refer back to your map. Okay, yeah. this is how I will react to this. But this is, uh, that, that, that's been the universal truth way before, that oh people, yeah. uh, uh, they are f different strokes for different folks. Oh, yes. Isn't it true? Uh, yes, that's, that's true. However, so what NLP did, yeah. okay, is to structure that map so that now I can understand and extract your map. So now I understand you. So you th there's a difference between imposing my map, telling you this is okay. right, this is wrong, versus yeah. extracting your map. What is right for you? What is wrong for you? Does, does you understand my strokes? Yes. Yeah? So I'm a different folk, I'm a different person, different and you folk. understand my stroke before you work with me. So yes. that, that's the conclusion of map 
and the discussion we had yes. about it. Okay. On that note, I hope uh, you understand. I didn't, I didn't understand anything. I'll ask them for more. So uh, stay with us, and we'll come back and dig deeper into the subject matter of NLP and values with Professor Barungao and Engineer Santa Clara. Stay with us. This is Expat Insights. Good morning. Welcome back to Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandhian, and I'm here with two former aliens, they claimed a while ago. <laughs> and uh, we are talking about the subject matter of NLP and values. My guest is Professor Juno Parungao. She's very famous in the northern side of Petro Manila, and her sidekick, engineer Santa Clara. So, uh, make me understand a bit more. What do I do with this? Now, the, fa now the fact that uh, different strokes for different folks is kind of easier for me using the science that you were talking about. Is it a science? Is it, is it a method? Is it a, what do you call it, science? It's a science, okay. yes. But mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to explain it the more in more simpler terms, I would say that it is a science for you to know how to understand yourself more first. First. First, okay. And if you understand yourself first, you'll be able to understand other people. Okay. Second, Obviously. and understand the community third. So it goes out like wow. that. It is like emotional intelligence, you know, know thyself first, Sabi mm. Shakespeare. The only uh, difference from EQ or emotional intelligence is that this science provides structure and a method on how to achieve that. Mm. It oh gives boy. us steps and yeah. procedures to follow. Mm, okay. So that the goal becomes more achievable and not abstract. Okay, okay. And that's where uh, you talked about achi from achievement to self actualization. Yes. Yeah, that was before the show. We haven't spoken about it. So, what are the okay. principles of the science? What are the theories? If it's a science, there must be a theory, or what are the guiding principles? Well, if, you it's name about a yeah. if it's about self actualization, that is born out of Abraham Maslow. Right. And th but he uh, died. Uh, without uh, having to lay down... Without self-actualizing. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say that. <laughs> or without having to put down the steps on how to go there. Right, okay. And uh, you, s you were saying earlier s about uh, how to go there, the, the procedure. Yeah, how to... So what are the... No, maybe the principles for self Principles. Yeah. There is a hierarchy. Okay, what is this hierarchy? Uh, you c everybody knows it in college. Uh, Maslow has the hierarchy of needs. He, that's this legacy. It starts with the basic needs up to the pinnacle of the triangle, which is the right. self-actualization. And according to his theory, you cannot jump from one level to another. Uh-oh. Yes, but uh, since that idea has already been revolutionized, like uh, Claude was explaining earlier to me, that you cannot just say, I'm done with this basic need and now I'm on my second. Actually, all of these needs happen simultaneously. Right. So unlike what Maslow claims, mm -hmm. that you need to go uh, step by step, gradual mm -hmm. growth. Instead of gradual growth, you're saying that it's a dynamic situation for yes, every it's individual. A it's, it's a system. It's a system. Okay, but the principles of NLP from that perspective, what are, what are they? You mean asking about how yeah, they are Are there linked? any guidelines? Or how uh, you, we understood it in the layman's term, in the academic term, but what are, if there are any rules to it? Uh, okay. Okay, so the most famous principle that you'll, you'll read in every NLP book is, is the map is not the territory. Okay. Is the map is not the Do you call the them territory. principles or you call them something? Presuppositions. Presuppositions, so okay. So these are NLP presuppositions. Presuppositions, okay. okay. And so when you say the map is not the territory, mm -hmm. territory, so let's define territory first. A territory is is reality. So what we are yeah. seeing right now is reality. <laughs> but then again, how I perceive reality is my map. And so yeah. we are in the same territory, <laughs> the same room. <laughs> but however, we have three different points of views <laughs> of this room. And that's our map. <laughs> and so how do we use this? Map is not territory. And so if I impose that you know, it's cold in this room. And she says it's not. She says it's not. Right. I say it's cold. She says it's not. So it's my map okay, and her map and the territory. Uh, what reality might be warm. Yeah. It, it might be maligamgam. 
Yeah. Okay. And to you, you say, it's just fine. I'm just fine. Okay, so that's different strokes for different folks. Yes. No? Anything else? Okay. Um, the meaning of your communication is the response you get. Mm. Okay, so that's another NLP presupposition. Mm -hmm. okay. And what it just means is this. Okay. Mm. If I tell you something mm -hmm. and you don't do it, uh, okay. then right. are you wrong? Are you, can I judge you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Or the meaning of what I told you is exactly what you did. Okay. And so if I know this, I'll just correct what I said. Oh, so that's not what I meant. Go to your left, then you go to your right. Okay, now go to your left. Okay. Ah, so I course ah. correct it. Ah, okay. Instead so, of so, imposing. So, so you're citing an example. You're saying when I'm facing Juno here and I tell her, okay, raise your right arm. But my right arm is to my right, well, her right arm is to my left. So that's, that is an example of the confusion that can happen. Yeah. Is, that, is that why? So, so one I of the principles is that I must be aware that her yes. right is my left. Yes. Ah, okay, 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 fine. So these are one, some of the princi uh, presuppositions or there are more? Yeah, th there are more. There okay. are a lot. <laughs> so what do you go beyond, what do you do with them? How, uh, how do you apply uh, NLP? Uh, how do you make use of it in life, at work? Uh, what we gathered before in our trainings is that uh, when you're talking, you have to make conscious, conscious effort to calibrate your talking, your language, with the other person so that uh, you don't have miscommunication. Calibrate. Calibrate is the Is that a word? Is that another <laughs> word? It's uh, a <laughs> like fine-tuning? Fine-tuning. Fine yes. So wouldn't that be in the basic etiquette like tact or courtesy or politeness or proper thinking would, would that more on uh, sensing what the other person puts more value on oh okay for example for example Kunyari, halimbawa. <laughs> yeah. if I am listening keenly to you I should know what you put emphasis on what ideas are you more of a visual person are you more auditory are you more of a feeling person I get this from the words you use like for example, he said cold. That is he a said fe cold, okay. feeling. Yeah. If you're the type who uses the expression "I see, I see, I see," you're then, then and you're I, when I say I understand, mm -hmm. that would be understand would uh, would be kinesthetic, I think. Which or is what does that mean? That what does the word kinesthetic mean? Feeling movement. Oh, okay, okay. But I right. think it's more on the in internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. But that's another term. All right. Yes. So you calibrate your language and your behavior. Mm -hmm. and your behavior to be able to do what to be able to communicate, communicate better to, connect. to 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 uh, express leftness left and right is right yes. in from his perspective from the listeners yes. perspective. That's and connect and, and connect, connect. Yeah. isn't wasn't there a connection already when you pointed out a left or a right or a right or a left there 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 is connection yeah. now l let me let me yes, sir. um explain more yeah. this word called calibration. Yeah. So calibration is just this. When you talk to a baby, mm -hmm. you use baby language. <laughs> and that's me calibrating <laughs> the baby. I don't talk to the baby. Okay, what's your opinion about our the economy? government? Or the government. But wait, so I, I, have, <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I have an interesting read. I hold this whole conversation for pause. Because I heard, read somewhere that when grown-ups do that to babies, they go, <laughs> uh, they, they don't give a heck for what's going oh on. Yeah. Huh? Oh These yeah. are your assumptions that that's their language. Yes. And the baby probably might have an IQ of 155. You know? <laughs> and he's thinking, there's a fool in front of me. <laughs> so uh, w are you saying that that's, that was just a humorous example that you... Well, yeah. But yeah. then again, that's what people do. People calibrate. People talk your language. So if you're talking to a teenager, then, then you must oh. know um, game, computer game language. You must know, like, maybe the so cartoons. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like the, like the lingo of 
the teenagers. Yeah, you, or you must watch uh, Vice Ganda. I, I don't know that. That's why it's done that, by the way. <laughs> or let's have a no, social issue, for example. How okay. do you teach family planning to, let's say, uh, people uh, who are not well off or are not educated? Right, so you can use NLP, mm. you can use this uh, science. Yeah. Th it's not a philosophy, it's a science. It's a science. It's a science, okay. So how would you do that? That's a very good example. How would I teach people who... Uh, practice little family uh, control, yeah. how would I teach them or how would I put across the value of family control? First, I would have to be acquainted with them right. and then uh, mm. seek out their values, what's important to them, how they talk, their <laughs> manner, their <laughs> behavior and when I deliver my, my speech, so to speak, I would also deliver it and how they would deliver it. I will not give the medical terms. Ah, so you match the language. Yes. You match not just and the, the priorities. Not just the words, but also everything else, the like the rhythm, yeah. the tone, the yeah. priorities. Yeah. Of course, figuring out what is important to them. Yeah. That would be their values, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the procedure. That's the one application of yes. it. No? What are the other applications of uh, this? NLP. It could also be in uh, guidance counseling, mm -hmm. that's in school, uh, in the human resource department, that's also okay, and uh, social workers, yes, mm -hmm. they can benefit a lot from this. What have you applied it for, the two of you, since you've been at it for four years, you mentioned? I have applied it in school setting. In, in the teaching? In teaching. And you, sir, Claude? Um, we've done it for sports. Okay, so people who would want to perform better than, than their normal or average. Mm -hmm. we, well, I've exceed, done it. Stretch, yeah, it yeah. Exceed, stretch, yeah. break their records. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I've done it for accelerated learning. Yeah. Okay, and so, so there's each, each person has their own different learning style. And yeah. so if you could find your learning style, then, then that would be up. Would you be that. able to share a study, an example, or a success? story of you having used it in sports? In sports? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So I just can't mention... I the names. Can't say, mention. Say, say Tom, Dick, and Harry. Okay. So Tom. Yeah, okay. for example. Tom. Okay. Pedro. <laughs> yeah. So whenever he, he starts his game, yeah. okay, he, he pictures... Okay, so if he sees the opponent bigger, he sees himself being thrown by the opponent even before the game starts. And the game is Aikido. Okay, uh, uh, wrestling. Something like that. Okay, let's say that. Okay. Judo. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, which one? Judo. Judo, okay. okay. Judo. Sounds like and judo. So, and yeah. so that's the map of this person before he even attempts to fight this ah, other person. Ah, ah, and ah. so he's lost the game Already. even <laughs> before starting the oh, game. Oh, so it's like mental visualization. Right, that means that's like part part of that. That's so part of that. And so what we do is we extract. So how do you scare yourself? How do you visualize this person throwing you? How do you visualize you getting knocked off? How do you visualize losing? Because and there's a So you, you help them give expression to the, their map. What's happening in to the their map. To deconstruct the map. Into no, but you help make them yes. express it. And then yes. how do you resolve and then it? How the map. Usually, when they find that this is their map, they yeah. make corrections right there. Because so, now they see their map. going back to the analogy of a sports person, mm -hmm. there's a smaller guy, there's David, and, and he Goliath. sees Goliath, and he feels that Goliath might throw him yes. down and crush him. Yes. So, he, you make him express it before that happens. Yes, then express it. And he figures out that that cannot be true, or you help him do it? Well, I don't, I don't really help. I okay. just I just extract the structure and and make the person understand that this is how you do it. Okay? You see yourself being thrown, and that's why you lose. Mm. And so now the person now has an opportunity to make changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so how did David do it to Goliath? Okay. I, I would infer that David would see that stone hitting Goliath's forehead and bullseye. falling down, even okay, even without. You know, um, uh, even without trying to do this, he'll hit it. He'll hit that bullseye. So that's two different maps. 
Juno, I understand the David Goliath metaphor, Professor Juno, I do, no? But, and I also probably, because you're speaking in abstracts about yeah. any sports person, there's no name yeah, there. Uh, uh, take, uh, bring me to real life, business or success in family, or as you mentioned, that family planning, no? Mm -hmm. uh, how would you use the same, would this be a technique? Would this call, we call an NLP technique to deconstruct? Or would it be the, would it be a technique? How would I apply it to family planning? I will reacquaint the people with what they hold dear, what they value. All right, so there's a couple, Mr. and Mrs. Santa Clara, okay? <laughs> and they have no idea about family control, for example. Of course, you're single right now, no? One day yeah. you'll become yeah, one Mrs. Day. Yeah. yeah. So how would you help that uh, couple? Okay, uh, I would ask them, are they, are, are they happy with their present state? Okay. And then uh, they will be giving me some answers. I have to take uh, care that I will not be giving them the answers. answers. No answers. No answers from my part because they are the experts. And then through questioning, they will realize in the end that they value uh, that, they w that, that they're able to provide for their children and that they will realize that they need the family planning. Ah, so you help them express mm -mm. until uh, they can sort out what is important to them? Your job is just to guide them with questions and they should be the one to realize the solution. Mm -hmm. And then they are able to figure out that it's not kids or it's not, uh, it's not having a lot of kids or a lot of money not or a lot of comfort. Mm. And so what will extract is, is, is what triggers you to make babies? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what triggers you? Because you, now you've got 10 and there's one coming. So what triggers you to make babies what are the values behind that and mm -hmm. maybe we quality control the value in meaning this is your value and this is producing babies and so yeah. that's where we we stop it at the value I, I would like to understand this more I w I, if you don't mind no, I mean yeah. I would like to get a little more clarity on this I'm getting the hang of it but yet perhaps I'd like to see an example or a step-by-step -step process on how this would be achieved and if there would be success is there something else that you can cite uh, because I'm sure you do practice this, so yeah. yeah. Is there something else that can concretize this more? Because talking about kids and RH bill, except is a bit s scary for me. That might be my value. <laughs> no. Uh, so is there something? Okay. So let me exactly. How about success in business or studies? Uh, something that you can name stuff and cite, okay. cite the facts to. Um, I have uh, an example, but it's not about business, it's right. not about studies. Right, sir. This is, well, I recently went to Davao. Okay. And yeah, in Compostela Valley. Mm -hmm. okay. and Sorry. Compostela Valley. Okay. okay. And, and there's a town there totally wiped out. Uh, okay. From the floods last, okay. last, last year? From the floods last December. Yeah. And then I was part of, uh, of uh, the briefing team. Okay. And then one of the This is with Mind Pool? This is no, with Mind Pool? No, it's outside Mind Pool. Yeah. So I was with some guidance counselors, psychologists, and then they were wondering how I would use NLP for, right. for this kind of debriefing. Right. Okay. And so one of the uh, main points okay, that I will share is this. One person. Yeah. Okay, one of the victims of the flood. One of the victims yeah. lost the father, the mother. Yeah. Okay, and so he was totally devastated. Mm -hmm. okay. And I was using the usual NLP uh, change work. Okay. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Visual is picture. Okay. Auditory is sound. Kinesthetic is feeling. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, she mentioned shivering. Yeah, stuff you like mentioned that. that. Understand, <coughs> yeah. But that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. okay. And so what I used was neurosemantics. Wow, you threw in another yeah. big word for yeah, me. I At my old age, uh, I'm a little concerned <laughs> with big words. It's huh? just about words. Yeah. And so meaning. I will explain that. Yeah. Neuro, again, is neurology, your behavior. Yeah, yeah. Semantic is meaning. meaning. And, yeah. th and that will connect to the values. Because this child that I was talking to, yeah. he had values that were, that were affecting his feelings. Wow, wow. This is, this is scary yeah. for me. No, I don't know if that's again you're gonna okay. create a map of me, but yeah, this is scary for me. Okay, you know what, uh, engineer, we've got to take a break. I got a signal, yeah. no? So hold the thought I'll and hold. feeling that, and we'll pause. Okay. We'll take a time pause. We'll come back, no? So stay watching. We are in the middle of something important in was it Davao? 
was it Dawa? Yeah. And uh, we'll come back and take this up, and we'll also find out where you can, of course, get this kind of training that they're talking about. And I'm your host, Raju Mandian. Stay watching. This is Expat Insights. Good morning. Welcome back to Expert Insights. We are on the subject matter of neuro-linguistic programming and values, and we are talking to Engineer Santa Clara. That's right. Engineer Santa Clara and Professor Parungao. I'm so happy I can pronounce this name well. Parungao. <laughs> yeah, is it right? Do you know? Yes. So, go back to that little child who, who was lost his father, yeah. and he was devastated. Lost both parents. Yeah. I guess lost the house also. So. Really and you, let me, let me uh, <coughs> recollect that, and you try to use a uh, visual language, that <coughs> means pano kung, no? Or uh, kinesthetic language, ano yung pakiram dammo, no? Mm. Like that, and then you move to neurosemantics, that's a word you threw in. Yeah, what? I threw in yeah, that okay. word. Yeah. Right? Because neuro-linguistic programming um, uh, deals with how, how you store that memory, you oh. store it inside of you as ah. a picture. So when you recall it, there's a picture like a movie. And some movies have sounds. Right. And then your right. body is affected. You feel something. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You know what? Uh, just a quick one. Several years ago, I used to have chest pains. Okay. And uh, I couldn't find any cure for it. Okay. I couldn't find any healing for it. And uh, then a doctor scolded me in the U.S. And he happened to be my cover of buy -in. And he said, what is wrong? What is it that you're holding on your chest? Because it was a chest pain. I said, what am I holding on my chest? And he said, what is it? Take it out and throw it out. Said, what? Trust me, uh, the pain went away, never came back. But for months, I was carrying this heavy burden on my chest. So uh, I don't know if he knew what you know, but <laughs> he did good for me. Yeah. OK, so going back to the boy. And so the boy had a, a, um was so frustrated okay, and so I asked the boy okay, when you recall this incident what do you see uh, okay okay and okay. then he, he, he explained the picture and and I did something to the picture so so I said, Pano. you know how oh. I sorry I it's so big, <laughs> sorry I spoke, spoke French make it small <laughs> you know that's the picture that you're always recalling it's in front of you make it small and throw it away right right and with the sound throw it also away Mm. And he said, nothing, nothing happened. I'm still hurt. Okay, okay. okay. And so I asked him, okay, where, where is that hurt? Where in your body do you keep it? Okay, it's here. What's the shape? What's the size? And so once he could describe it, I told the person, okay, get it out of your body. Just like what the doctor oh, said. Oh, okay, all right. Get it out of the body, okay? And yeah. so he threw it out. We, we put an imaginary um, trash can in front. He threw it all out. Yeah. But then again, it's again. not like one of those quack doctors. Uh, no, 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 that no, stuff. No, no blood. No blood. No, 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 blood. no, no okay, nothing. Okay. So but would would that be also uh, a technique that they have devised because the yes. sight of blood might give actual uh, might give a much more stronger representation uh -huh. to one of the one of the <laughs> languages. Oops. Yeah, yeah. Oops, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so these yeah. are just, that's why, I, I, I would guess, that's why um, they were yeah. dumbfounded because it was so easy to do. Mm. It was so easy to do. I yeah. didn't have to study all of these things to, to know that it's, okay, point to me, it's in your chest. How big is it? It's this big, what's the size, what's the weight? Okay, now that you've described it, take it out. Oh, and he was able to do it? He was able to do it and he said, nothing, I'm still hurt. And so NLP did not work there. Mm. Okay, and so I used the, the two words I threw in, neuro semantics. semantics okay. And it's just meaning. Okay. And so it's not a picture, it's not a sound, mm. it's not a feeling. Mm. It's, it's way beyond that. It's mm. meaning. Mm. Okay. And that connects it to values. Okay. Oh, there we go, NLP and values. Yeah. Yeah. So thus, meaning uh, is also representation, isn't it? It is, at yeah. a higher level. At, at a mm. deeper level, yeah? Mm. So values also are actually pictures which are old and have been there for a long time. And you and put have meaning. And then, yeah, because they've taken so many forms and mm -hmm. shapes, they have become multidimensional inside of you. And you believe you. in them. Right, I get it. So I get it. 
Do I get it? Am I, have I got it? Congratulations. You got have it. I got it? Have I got it? Have, did you do something to me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if I may add something yes, to that. I took a course in behavior modification. Now, yeah. if psychologists are going to uh, do a therapy on that person, they would need to get the long history of the person first, right. and they would have a schedule of how to change the behavior. Right. It's going to take a long time, probably oh. even months. Oh, oh. But he can do it in one city. Oh my God, he's a magician. <laughs> hey, so let me clarify the that. The magic of... Uh, I cannot do it. The person can do it. I, I did not do anything. I just asked. The therapy can be done in one sitting. I have <laughs> shaky knees, Engineer Santa Clara. No? So I need you to talk to me after the show. Okay. No? Weak knees. So you need to take those knees out and put them on the table for me. No? So now, let's. Uh, is this something that you want to show me, uh, Professor Parungo? Because well, you're <laughs> It's not something I would like to show you, but it's online. You can Google yeah. it. Actually. No, you were looking at some images, so I thought. Oh, yeah. uh, some images, but the images are also online. It's the. Um, yeah. It's going to be small if I show. Okay, it. no, no, you can hold it up, and my camera person will focus on it. There you go. That's the representation of. Uh, the values. The, 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 yeah. Yes. So you zoom in a bit. Ah, there we go. One, two, three. Hold it up. Hold it up. There you go. Okay. I see it. Fine. You can adjust it. Tilt it a bit so it's fine. There, there, there. Nice. So that's what it is. That's the uh, uh, visual representation yeah. of what you tried to explain to me. Yep. Is it correct? Okay, fine. All right. So tell us now what you will. Oh, thank you very much, camera person. <laughs> Salamat po. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I tried to apply NLP with uh, the ATAS. ATAS. The ATAS? ATAS. 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 Italians. <laughs> Okay. Whichever <laughs> works. In three barangays, uh, Palace, Nakolkol, and uh, Villar. Right. And then uh, I just used NLP communication model. Yeah, which one you spoke to them in pictures, sounds, or feelings? Yes. Yeah. I used that to model the value system of the people there. I did a lot of interview mm -hmm. with, uh, during my stay there. And then I enumerated their values, starting with family system and uh, social class. Just like you do in any other uh, yes. values-based workshop that you figure out what's important. Yes, the model okay. shows the, those values. So basically the paper I wrote, which was published by University of Malaysia, mm -hmm. says that uh, if you want to do social change work with these people, you would have to bear in mind those values and those filters. Mm -hmm. Basically that is just... I did not introduce anything new in the model. I just used that as to, to model what is already there yeah. and put structure. So, did you work with them afterwards or it was just a study only? It's just a study. So, nothing was done to make changes or effect changes? This is supposed to help those people who like to make changes. Oh, so it would be like a guide? Yes. A little like a um, compass for them to a employ. So, it's future. another map for them. Oh, right. So, now there you go. Map and <laughs> compass. Isn't this funny? No? Great. So, now tell us about the business side of what you do about mind pool. I'm, I'm I understood it. I hope uh, everything's clear. And if my audience wants to know more, understand more, where do they go to uh, to get learnings in this, to acquire more knowledge? Well, they can visit our website at mindfulinc.com or nlp-philippines, and we will post there the programs which Engineer Claude Santa Clara is going to host. Right. So, what are these programs? How much uh, okay. time, etc., mm -hmm. is involved? Okay, so, so we're, we're currently uh, the only company giving neurosemantic NLP. So it's, the, it's that combination, neurosemantic NLP. I'm the only licensed uh, neurosemantic trainer in the Philippines right now. Mm -hmm. And we're offering application workshops using NS and NLP. And, and number NS and NLP, one, okay. Yeah, and number one would be we're giving coaching licenses. Right. Okay. So that's one. If you want a coaching license, that's international, and it's recognized in over 40 countries. Okay. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not the ICF. It's not the ICF. Mm -hmm. okay. We call it also the the MCF or the Meta Coach Foundation. It's right. under Neurosemantics. I'm sorry, I threw in an abbreviation. Yeah. ICF is the International Coach Federation, which is 
a globally recognized body. And here's another one, Meta Coach Foundation. Meta Coach yeah. Foundation, yeah. we recognized in 40 countries. Um, yeah. um, our psychology is the self-actualization psychology. Right. And so yeah. we're using This is in tandem with what Professor Juno was talking about. Yes. Using the science of the science. Uh, NSNLP now, not just NLP, yes. but NSNLP. In coaching. To, to, to uh, conquer the pyramid to conquer yeah, the yes, pyramid yeah, of yeah. self-actualization. And we coach the person to self-actualize. Right. To, to, so let me throw in again, to unleash, okay? Unleash. Their potential. Unleashing let means go. Yeah. letting something's holding them. Right. There's a blockage. And yeah. what we do is we unleash that so that they can go for whatever they want, go for their goals, go for their potentials. When we right. say potentials, that's, it's that's, not that's, there. That's, I think there's an underlying assumption there that people are holding. Yes. Yes. People yes. who are not successful are holding In back, back. Yes. are holding themselves back. Yes. Yes. Could be from uh, any visual fear, yes. auditory mm -hmm. fear, or NS fear. That's a new one, no? A semantic fear, a yes. meaning fear, yeah. Not only people who are not successful, also people who are successful and to, if they want to create a change, they want to lead into something that no one has ever done. Or maybe they want to go higher up yes. the mountain, no? Higher and that's yeah. the highest. Mm, fantastic, can, yeah. fantastic. Prof, Juno, you want to say something about that? Okay, uh, that will definitely help a lot of students, uh, people in the education business, and managers, CEOs, and uh, trainers themselves. Trainers themselves? Who are these people? Uh, he's a trainer. Oh, oh trainers <laughs> as in like trainers. educators, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said earlier, it will help you get to know yourself more and deal right. with people because in this day and age, the new genius is the, uh, the group genius. You cannot oh. do things on your own right now. Yeah, the group mind. The group mind. Okay. Yeah. Or the group think. So the group it's a think. social self-actualization. Yeah. So how long does the process of uh, acquiring this new set of knowledge and skills take? Okay, so to be a licensed meta coach, you will uh, go through 14 days of intensive training. With you. Okay. With you, okay. Um, six days with me and eight days with the founder. That's Dr. Michael Hall. Not me. Not her. Michael Hall? Dr. Michael Hall is the founder of Neurosemantics. So and he's in the Philippines? Uh, no, he goes to Hong Kong, he goes oh. to New Zealand, he goes to mm -hmm. Italy, uh, South goes Africa, around. Mexico. So when he's in Hong Kong, I go there. Oh, okay, fantastic. <laughs> so and this happens when? Oh. Any, anything upcoming? Well, it, the third module, that's the eight-day module that Dr. Hall will be uh, hosting. Fourteen plus eight? Oh, six so plus eight. Six, I do the six, he does the eight. Oh, sure, yeah. And that will happen in Hong Kong on May 12 to 19. May 12. And that's 2013. So oh, May 17. 12 to 19. Oh, fine, fine. All right. So thank you very much uh, <laughs> for being on Expat Insights. And I'm sure you gave us a lot of uh, objective uh, insights. That's a nice one. No? So you gave us a big picture view of what you do, NLP and values. Uh, is there something that I forgot to ask you or did you read my mind? Did you read the map? Or is there something that I should ask you? This is your time to give, fill up that detail. Professor Parunga, go first. Let's just mention the website again. That's yeah. uh, NLP-Philippines, also mindpulling.com. Okay. You can visit our website and check out the programs uh, being taught by Engineer Claude Santa Clara. Okay, Engineer Santa Clara, any fa uh, parting words? Mm -hmm. any, anything to read their mind or to tell them how to be cool about things? Well, if, if you really want to learn coaching, uh, coaching is a practice, it's not a certificate. Okay, and so here, if you take it with us, we'll, I also practice. So. So let me invite you to practice with us. We practice Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But the details you need to find out on our website. All right. Thank you very much. Salamat po. Salamat po. Thank you very much for watching Expat Insights. I hope that was interesting for you. Next week on Expat Insights, we will have a lady called Sandra Rubli. She's a Swiss person, and she will also talk about a similar subject matter, maybe enlighten us a bit more. So thank you for watching. Good night and have a great weekend ahead of you.